We're back on Buckeye Football Weekly and welcoming in head coach Jim Tressel after a victorious trip to the Metrodome in Minneapolis. And you, know, you stay on the road in the Big Ten for two weeks in a row. Can there be a carryover effect to how you play on the road and doing it in a strange place again? Well, you know, the thing that was impressive to me was it was in that second half of the second week in a row that uh, I thought our kids really reached deep down in and, and, you know, it was a battle through the first half and then to go and, and really dominate the second half, I, I thought said a lot about, uh, you know, what our kids are all about. It was good to see that in a second week in a row on the road. Yeah, certainly something they did and got the job done again. And as you take the field here at the Metrodome, of course, you're always looking for something on the road and you, you find it in Dustin Fox there. That's right. Dustin is on the injured reserve with the Vikings. You know, he was a high draft choice for him and broke his arm, uh, but gave a great uh, talk to our kids this morning and they loved having him around. And, and, uh, Troy Smith loves having Anthony Gonzalez around. Don't you though? 11 yards on the pickup and you start out uh, by loosening them up with a deep throw and then you break them down with a little bit of running game with Antonio Pittman. Well, that was uh, kind of a, a flip, supposed to be halfback pass, but it wasn't open. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Antonio did the right thing and kept the ball and then Troy Smith did the right thing and found uh, San Antonio Holmes on the corner route. Well, that's a sweet first drive. Seven plays, 80 yards. The last 41 picked up on the San Antonio Holmes touchdown. You're off 7 nothing in somebody else's building. Well, that's right, and great pass protection, and we were in good shape there, and they did a good job of uh, hitting some big plays against us, going back the other direction. Well, that's going to be part of it when the rushing attack is so uh, something that you have to keep aware of, uh, that you got to put eight in the box at some points. Yeah, that's right, and Ashton Yabote did a nice job breaking that one up and forced them to, uh, to go for a field goal, which they missed, and we come back with the football, and, and uh, Good looking catch by Teddy Ginn on the post route. Again, stretching things down the field, and uh, Ted Ginn does haul that in 35 yards complete. Antonio Pittman takes the dump off, 16 yards. A good looking screen play, and our guys have done a good job mixing in the screen into our attack, and uh, it's a good job moving down in the field goal range, and Josh Houston, who uh, is doing a great job as our kicker, bangs it through. Well, he's the only one that's ever seen the inside of the Metrodome before of your whole team because he's got that medical red shirt. That's right. There. He kicked off there last time, and here comes Lawrence Moroni, and he's a heck of a good running back, and in the first half, he you know, came up with this big run, and you, know, you take this big run away, and he averaged three yards a carry. Yep. If you take Antonio Pittman's big run away, he still averaged over five yards a carry, so we were proud of what he did, and, and uh, here they snuck into the end zone and, and uh, moved a little closer, but uh, wasn't for long. Yeah, what a special play this was. Ted Ginn Jr. from the goal line. You try to mix it up a little bit, he doesn't need any help. No, nope. fake reverse kind of got them off track and uh, said he didn't have much trouble running by him after that. That's the first time since 1997 that an Ohio State football team has taken it back on a kickoff return. Michael Wiley did it back then against Bowling Green, but first they, time ooh, without a penalty. Exactly. Yeah. Well, the glance over the shoulder. That's you right. saw the glances there. That's, right. that's happened before. But the uh, D stands tall again. You know you're going to have to stop the run at some point. Ashton Ubote was tough on that corner. Sure was, and they came back and hit a short field goal, and uh, we've got a little bit tighter ball game. Yeah, that's a loss of five on the pitch. Then it's Janini, uh, 31 yards. Jason Janini on the kick. 17 to 10 is the count right now. So this one's certainly not getting away anyway. Well, it sure isn't. And they went and came up with a huge play there and, and uh, did a nice job making the, the big play on the ball in the air. I don't know and they who would have counted, counted on 27 points in the first quarter, but it doesn't seem to stop here. It's, the points are going up again. I'll tell you what, 17 to 17 ball game and uh, two people moving it up and down the field. Five yards complete on the touchdown. It's tied. 15 yards for Antonio Pittman. He was running with purpose. You know, he really was. I think he's been getting better every week, every game. Uh, really happy about his uh, progress. Back to the air, 11 yards complete. Does anybody go over the middle like Anthony Gonzalez? I'll tell you what, he's our inside receiver and does a great job. And some weeks the inside is open and some weeks it isn't. And here we didn't get the first. And, you know, as I look back, maybe we should have taken the three points. But... Uh, you know, away from home, I thought maybe we needed seven and um, wasn't a good decision going for it and gave them a chance to come back here. They run a little draw play, but nothing doing. Marcus Green, uh, Mike Kudla there. Then they go to the air and uh, good job by Ashton Yabote breaking up the play and, and uh, we're working hard, playing hard. Well, that's certainly, uh, you know, you take that chance right there, something that you do. Uh, on the road, but that sudden change defense also, and, and you get the response you want from the well, team. Well, that's right, you know, and you know you have to go for it, especially when you're you're away from home. And now we got to get them, though. We can't be missing short yardage plays. But uh, our kids played hard the first half. 
But again, as I said in the open, uh, real proud of the way they played that second half. Well, this one came in uh, when you look at the way the matchup was. Everybody else looking at it on paper anyway. Number one rushing offense against the number one rushing defense. A lot of fun pushing and shoving. Something has to give. Well, so far, nothing's given. It's 17 all. Well, that's right. And, and, you know, we kept saying all week long, you know, don't forget about their passing attack. Mm -hmm. When you have to put so many hats in the box to stop the run, you're leaving your DBs a little bit alone back there, and they happen to throw some up like they did. Yeah. Uh, they can make some plays. We saw Ashton Yubo to get victimized a little bit, but a uh, heady player like that. Oh, he was yeah. tough on the run. Um, you know, and, and pass plays like that when you're left out there on the island are going to happen. But I guess, like you say, nine in the box and uh, try to make them run it there and to throw it over you, or you can double receivers and you know what they're going to do then. Well, you know, and the tough thing, too, is when you're stopping the run so hard, you're not getting as good a pass rush. And uh, I thought as the second half came out, uh, those guys got a little bit uh, stiffer back in the back end there and, and uh, you know, obviously came up with the win. All right. We'll hold the halftime adjustment. Thoughts? We're back 17 all at the half. We've got second half coming up right after this. All weekly with second half highlights from the Metrodome and the Buckeyes go to the break 17-17 against the Golden Gophers after giving up over 100 yards to one running back and you don't see that very often from a Buckeye defense. Uh, Lawrence Maroney's done it 11 times in his career to other teams but the adjustments what you have to do to try to shut that down. You know, I think our guys just came out and just kept playing and you know, I'm sure Coach Haycock and Coach Fickle and their staff did a little bit of this and a little bit of that but you know they I think they came out uh, from series one and you know we were kicking off to them and Josh Houston banging them into the end zone and making them start on the 20 and getting that you know quick turnaround and making them punt to us I thought was key. Yeah, they didn't have a kickoff return. He didn't, no. he didn't allow them he a didn't chance allow it. to do right. that and that's fantastic especially when you put 45 points on the board and give them plenty of opportunities on the return but Antonio Pittman forget about the Gophers running attack this is something special. Now he just split them and, and uh, headed to the goal line for his first touchdown of the season. Hard to believe, uh, but he's coming along. Uh, he's coming along as a running back every day. Isn't he on pace for a thousand yards and no touchdowns? Yes, he, <laughs> he was. He was. Well, he gets it, gets it in, and the guys loved it up front, getting him into pay dirt, and the Buckeye. Uh, stands tall, Buckeye defense stands tall there by A.J. Hawk. Well, I think Maroney got 100 and some in the first half and maybe 15 in the second, and, and uh, here they're trying a little halfback pass back to the quarterback and almost a pickoff. Uh, Malcolm Jenkins played it well, stayed at home, and uh, it was a good job. Uh, good alertness. Fantastic play, and now faced with a fourth down situation, fourth and one, the pitch goes, and Mike, Mike Kudla chases down a, How about that? a fantastic running back. Backside defensive end chases down the the best running back in the country, perhaps, and uh, Mike Kudla is pretty good. That's a defensive turning point in the game. Uh, there's no question about it. And, and here we're doing a good job throwing the controlled stuff. Troy did a great job at the line of scrimmage, uh, making a lot of good decisions. Here he hands it off to Antonio, and Antonio's running hard and fast and with good pad level, and we're moving the football. Troy Smith checked off on this play. I think he got it right. Yeah, he did. He. Uh, he saw what they were in and, and uh, went to a checkoff and uh, Anthony Gonzalez beat the guy covering him and, and uh, that's a huge play. Yeah, first and 10 from the 27, hits the hot receiver inside and he goes 27 to the touch for the touchdown, 31-17 at that point and the D doesn't stop playing all day. Well, there's no question. They, they had Maroney's number by now and, and uh, Cupido still did a good job throwing the football out there and, and uh, Guy made a great play. You know, what can you say? You got to give him credit, and uh, they moved the ball down in scoring range. Big tall receiver Jarrett Ellerson, 44 yards complete, and then Gary Russell from the one takes it in for the touchdown, and it's back to a seven point game, so not going away. Well, no, that's right. You know, Minnesota's not going to give up. They haven't given up all year. They play hard, and especially at home in front of their home crowd, and so now we got to go back on offense and get some things done. Started with a little uh, shallow route off of our option look. Uh, in fact, there was two different ones of those in the same drive. Marcel Frost caught one, and then later on, Anthony Gonzalez. Then we had the little counter play by the quarterback, and Troy Smith hit it up in there nice and strong, and Antonio Pittman finished it off with a little stretch zone play, and, and uh, great to see him get in the end zone a second time. Great answer drive. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Four-yard touchdown run for Pittman, 38-24. Get it back to a two-score game. Well, that, that's important. And again, they, they tried to go back to their bread and butter, and, and uh, he ended up fumbled. He doesn't fumble very often. That means he must have been getting hit pretty hard all day long. And, and there we won the turnover margin with that one, and that's huge. Yep, 
one nothing bread and butter fingers there for just a second. Troy Smith keeps the play alive. It, it was a good job. He saw a coverage change and Santonio Holmes saw a coverage change and threw his hand up and uh, that's a big 30 yard touchdown. Sure was and that puts the final 45 on the board for the Buckeyes. It'll be a garbage touchdown a little bit later in this but Ohio State uh, for the day doing a great job this is a drive wheel right complete for 26 yards Brian Cupido is going to keep it for a pickup of two yards and Gary Russell the aforementioned garbage touchdown for the final 45 to 31 that's right 45 31 and uh, you know they, they were never going to stop playing no and, and uh, you knew that you respect that especially from a Glenn Mason coach right. team and uh, yeah, 45-31 the count, and when you talk about Troy Smith and the command that he had in that game, you see him check off, you see him doing the things, keeping plays alive, another step offensively? I think so. Uh, again, being able to spread it around, having a good balanced run game, doing some good things in the passing game, the short passing game, the long passing game, the intermediate. Uh, you know, I think we're getting better. Uh, now we get to come home and uh, get ready for the Illini. Yeah, it's not the kind of game that the D walks away saying, oh gosh, we gave up 500 yards because they averaged 350 in the dome on the ground and it was far under that total. That's right. And you get the win, that's the bottom line. Well, that's right, they rushed for I think 182, which yeah. is way below yeah. their average and threw above their average, made some great plays, you know, to their credit. And, and uh, you know, we came away with a win on the road. We're pleased about that and now we get to come home and and see what we can do to stay as contenders. When you get an offensive performance like that lined up the number one rushing offense and you outperform them, that's got to be a source of pride, especially on the road. You know, it really was. Uh, the fact that we rushed for, you know, over 200, 215 or something like that and threw for 230 some. Uh, and also had the special teams touchdown. Uh, you know, our kids put together a good effort. 45 points on the board for the Bucks offensively. Another week is two weeks in a row, over 40 for Ohio State. When we come back, we'll hear from A.J.